Before we dive into this video, I just want to make something super clear and that is that we love our yard. We love our boat yard. The people here, the crew here, they treat us really well and we trust them and they would never do us wrong. Like we really do just love them. They become our really good friends. Everything bad that's about to go down that you're about to see is all because of one person from the corporate side of things that came to the yard to like help. I guess for a period of time and so I just wanted to clear that up. It wasn't the fault of the yard crew. They honestly, they're the real victims here because they had to work with this guy for so long. But now that I've said that, we can get on with the video and you guys can see what all the fuss is about. Because the keel drop is happening eventually. <laughs> it took a while, but we just found our dream boat and just the way we wanted it, wrecked. Subscribe and join us as we put her back together and set off on our greatest expedition yet. I made a mistake. What happened? I pet him. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real big lap dog. Okay, let's go to the store. We got the saws all blades so we can cut the 5200 that connects the keel uh, once we get the bolts out. And now we're gonna go look at some tarps. We're hoping we can find a plastic tarp that a professional fiberglass are recommended to us today, which will maybe keep the dust out better now that we know we have to do a lot more grinding. We just had some great news. The yard crew just stopped by and said they're gonna go grab the keel stand. They have to go fix one of the legs on it because I guess one of them is tweaked. They're gonna fix that and then we should get our keel drop this afternoon. Right now we've got our half deconstructed salon everywhere. So I'm gonna put those away and then we're gonna start loosening up the bolts as a little bit of head start before they get here. We can't loosen them too much because we still need the structural stability, but we're gonna try to get them looser so that things will go faster. Less time in the slings means less money out of our pocket. So far these are all going real easy. Fingers crossed everything else goes smooth. We'll take out all the bolts and probably have to like cut the sealant underneath. Should drop off. They're getting ready to drop our keel today and we figured while we're at it, we might as well drop our rudder and inspect it, maybe replace the bushings. But they need to know how high to lift us so that the rudder post can drop all the way down the bottom of the boat. So I just measured it. We need to go up an extra three feet. Got the rudder all disconnected, undid the steering components. This is the autopilot component. All that's right now, all that's holding the shaft in is this bolt that's all disconnected. All that has to happen is pull it out and this will drop. We definitely have three of these. I was on the Beneteau site trying to order parts and it says that we should have two. Not sure what that means, but we definitely have three. We just heard back from the marina and apparently, even though they told us this morning that we're gonna do it today, best case scenario is we do it tomorrow because they're thinking that we may end up spending multiple days in the slings. And so they need to make sure that they don't need the travel lift for however amount of time they think we might be in the slings, which I think is kind of ridiculous. Like why'd they tell us this morning if that wasn't the case? We didn't dive into our project today because we wanted to be ready and able to, okay, all of a sudden we're dropping everything to be in the sling. So I'm just a little frustrated at the poor communication and poor planning. I, and mostly just cause like, I feel like we wasted a day. I mean, I, I got a lot of editing done, which was really good. And Brett got some things done, but. It's pretty early in the morning, but we're still waiting to get our keel drop today. Fingers crossed that that happens. While we're waiting, I'm just doing some cleaning and a little more investigating and we're finding interesting things. We knew that that side had been repaired and there was some new glass laid in kind of where they'd cut out pans. We didn't know that it happened on this side until we took all this out. Glad we took it out because it turns out they did cut these pans out and they did lay in a little bit of fiberglass and new gel coat. And in some places it's cracked. But my big question is, why did it happen again? Why is there cracking? Why didn't the repair work? Jade figured it out. So Brett's been freaking out about this all morning. So I'm looking around, I'm like, okay, well, what went wrong? What did they do wrong? And this is what I found in my searching. 
they didn't actually rebond it. So if you look right here, this is my archaeological find of the day. Do you see this curve right here? This is factory bonder from Beneteau. They squirted it on the bottom of the grid and they smushed it down and it rolls like this. Now, this right here is the bonder that the repair guys put in when the last owner had it repaired. And you can see they just put it in the edge of the tab, which we're actually starting to think all of this was a pan. They cut the pan out and then they just bondered like a half inch on the edge of the tab where the cracking was and basically just filled the crack. They didn't re-bond anything, at least not in a way that it would be structurally sound. It makes us feel so much better, so much better, because we've been worried. We're like, okay, they fixed this and it broke again. If we fix this, is it just gonna break again? If we fix this, are we gonna have it crack? Are we gonna always have to worry about it? Is our keel gonna fall off in the middle of the Atlantic or the Pacific or wherever we are? <sighs> but the answer to that question is no, because we're gonna do it right. We're gonna do it good, we're gonna be thorough, we're, we've already been more thorough, it seems, than they were originally because they didn't take off the gel coat. And, and we did, and that sucked. <laughs> and we have a lot more to do, but we're going to get it fixed right. They're coming for us. Going to drop the keel. Ah. How you doing, dude? Just getting this last bolt out and the rudder should drop, hopefully. Ow. <laughs> Well, once again, we're here waiting on the travel lift. Supposedly it's on its way and we're going to get lifted up and we, we don't know the plan. We don't know if we're going to get our keel dropped here or if they're going to move us somewhere else and drop our keel. There's been like the minimal communication possible to give us the impression that they're doing it soon. We got our rudder all disconnected. It's now sitting on a block of wood. The head honcho guy condescendingly implied that, well, once we see the rudders disconnected, we'll know that you're ready. It's like, all right, buddy. So I went and pulled out the one bolt and, okay, we're ready. So far though, this is the closest we've come to dropping the keel. I think it could actually happen today. I'm not like positive. I'm not gonna be like, we're dropping the keel today, but I think it could happen. And I'm excited. We're really, we're ready to go. Last night we went in with the Salzol and the, uh, not orbital sander, the oscillating. <laughs> Uh, blade and we went in and we cut as much of the 5200 as possible So hopefully as soon as they lift us and we dropped and we take the bolts out and we have just a little more space We'll be able to cut the rest of that out and the, the keel should Theoretically come out really fast and really easy <sighs> I'm looking forward to it because the next bit of our project is dependent on us getting this keel out of the way and I am super excited to be ready to move on I am tired of waiting <laughs> so it'll be good but I mean all of the waiting has given me an excuse to catch up on the editing so if you guys are seeing this video it could possibly be because they were slow to get us to drop the keel yeah I think we should call and be like hey so uh like what what's what's actually happening like at this point like don't don't just tell us lies like commit commit like what what's happening because this is stupid so she's she's pissed um, and then he keeps telling us oh well we're waiting on the girls in the office right for scheduling but she all along has been saying no I'm telling them to do this right now right. so he's just making yeah he, he's, he's yeah just, he's just making he's just it making, up making, making yeah it's, 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 not, it's he's, nothing to do with her he's lying to her it's this one guy he's lying to her face over and over and over again yeah. like again he blamed it on her today right but and I called her and she's like what are you talking about <laughs> Uh, anyways, she says that his plan to finish up doing whatever they're doing with those boats and get the travel lift, get our boat slinged up tonight, not probably not pick us up, but at least have the slings around our boat. So first thing they get here tomorrow morning, pick us up. And then because they're still saying, right, yo, you're probably going to need to lift all day. So then they can have all, us in the slings all day tomorrow. So again, if that happens, that'd be great. And hopefully we're out of the slings by... 9 a.m. or whatever, right? We don't want to suit up, like, get all of our gear on to start grinding, which is the next thing that we need to do if we're going to be 
needing to be available to drop the keel, which is what they've told us the last two days is, hey, we're about to do this, so be available. So we've been available and we've not done the rest of the grinding. And also we can't finish the grinding until we drop the keel. So how am I doing? I'm frustrated, but there's nothing we can do. I'm just gonna go and get back to work. I have editing I need to get done. So I'm gonna just be grateful for the spare time I have now. Well, good news. They've decided to sling us up for the night. Seriously awesome. We were not expecting it to happen and it's happening. So I'm like, I wanna say I'm happy, but I'm too relieved right now. Like that's all I can feel right now is relief. I'll be happy later, I think right now. I'm relieved. This is awesome. <sighs> Yay. That situation where we didn't get picked up just now wasn't his fault. It, okay. Because he was ready to go. They were ready to lift us up yeah. and he got a call on the radio and said, hey, you need to go launch the, this other boat. <sighs> So, at least one knock not against him. Yeah. That, one, that one's on the office. But that, the real reason we're recording is because as he was loading back up to go to the other boat, he looks at Jade. Directly in the eye. Directly in the eye and says, this is what happens when you have women in charge. We have both battle lost it on them. Oh, I, you heard <laughs> what I said to him. I wish we had recorded it. Yeah, I just I was I was filming B-roll and I just stopped a clip and started a new one. Or no, I, I was like in between clips when he said that to me, so I didn't get it and I'm just yeah. super bummed about it. He was making eye what? contact with me and he said, This is why we don't have women in charge. Or this is this what, is what ha happens. This is what happens when you have women in charge. Honestly, I'm like I'm like blown me? away, like, really? Did he just say that? It's just like what world are we living in where that's Okay. I know. Crazy. Honestly. Close to getting the keel. Man, we were this close, right? Keel, one to ten. What do you think? Seven. I think there's a chance. You're hopeful. I'd give it a five. So you're just like sitting on the fence? Yeah, I, I think You're neither hopeful I, I th nor... I think we're, yeah, I think it's <laughs> just as likely to happen as not to happen at this point. Uh, what a waste of a day. I got a, a lot done. What have you been doing all day? Well, but like for the last two hours, we've just been running around following these guys, I you know? know? Well, yeah, if, if we didn't think we were getting lifted up, I would be probably through another one. Everybody's rooting for us, but the one guy in charge. <laughs> but the guy that controls it all. Yeah. <sighs> It'll happen. Yep. Pull them all the way out till we were ready to go. Okay, all the bolts are out. Our keel is now only attached with some 5200. That's exciting. Our rudder is detached. It's just sitting there on a block of wood. The keel, once they lift us up, we'll probably have to cut some of that bonder off, but it should come off. All right. And we did find a leak at the very front keel bolt. It was rusty. Answers to questions. Yay, answers. <laughs> they asked if the keel bolts were out and I said, they're all loose, but I need to just go finish taking them out. And they said, okay, go ahead and take them out. So I ran up here, knocked them all out in about maybe five minutes tops. And uh, they're all gone. I don't know where they went. I don't know if they are gone gone for the day or if they just went to work on something else. Not the best communication skills. Brett has just sawzalled, I sawzalled the front, he sawzalled the back. We've got as much of the 5200 out as we can at this point because they didn't lift us up very much. We haven't come back yet, so we've done what we can and now we're ready for the next step. Can you hear it? I can hear what? I can hear it. It's like, you know Rice Krispies when you put the milk in? <laughs> that's what our that's what our boat sounds like. Snap, crackle, pop. Uh, I don't know if it's the pain or the fiberglass or the hole. We're making progress. We got all the bolts out. Rudders dropped. Just waiting on the lift again. We don't know where they went. They'll be back eventually. They've got to come back eventually because we have their lift now. Probably tomorrow. Really though, no, probably tomorrow. <laughs> Pretty early in the morning, we're waiting on the crew to get here because today we are dropping our keel. Hopefully, probably. <laughs> Jay, you're saying that. Yeah. <laughs> 
while we're waiting on the crew to show up to drop our keel the rest of the way, or I guess to pick us up so our keel can drop. As I do a little inspecting on our rudder, because I need to place an order today. So, I started taking this guy out. This is the bushing. And it shouldn't just come out that easily. It's supposed to stay solid, and this turns around it. So, we will definitely be ordering new rudder bushings. It's not going great. I'm really like, I can't even watch. They won't let me do anything. I can't say anything because I'm a woman. And they're going to put a hole in the bottom of the boat if they're not careful, or at least delaminate that entire area because they're like, they're trying to kind of like wedge it and tweak it and bend the hole around it instead of just cutting the 5200. <sighs> he shuts Brett down too. Like, it's just, this is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Found some fiberglass. Wow, it ripped out the pocket. All right. That'll be fun. It's official. We have no keel and no rudder attached to our boat. And no mast. And no mast. Yeah, we aren't much of a boat anymore. Well, I we, guess we're a motorboat now. Well, yeah, we're with a big boat. hole. Probably we're a lot faster. Except for the... Yeah, we took off a 10,000... He got a 10,000 pound weight loss surgery. <laughs> Surgeons were aggressive though. Yeah, there was definitely some damage done to the boat. Like, Significant amount of ripping yeah, to the hole, which is sucks. Uh, Probably three feet by two feet section. Multiple layers of fiberglass has just been ripped, ripped. off on the bottom ripped of the hole. Ripped off the hole. Yeah. So that's going to be fun to fix. But we knew there was going to be fiberglassing fixing on the outside. Yeah, we'd probably have to do it anyway. We probably yeah. So it sucks, and it mostly it was like traumatizing, like emotionally, just like rip. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, we knew it was a possibility when they started, and sure enough. It happened. There wasn't a whole lot of doing about it. We could have done a little more cutting on the inside around the kind of the sump area. I don't think it would have done. But it wouldn't have done much. We'll fix it. We'll Move fix on. it. Yeah. That should be like our tagline. We'll fix it. Expedition Evans. We'll fix it. <laughs> What's Bob the, not Bob the Builder? Fix a Felix? Fix it Felix? Cartoon movie, Disney animated. Oh, Wreck-It Ralph? Wreck-It Ralph. Do I get to be Wreck-It Ralph or do I get to be Fix-It Felix? I mean, if this and is thus the same far, you're game. definitely Wreck-It Ralph. Because <laughs> you know women. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they just see that clip and are like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> He's the worst. Anyways, they blocked us up great. And I'm very pleased with how we're blocked. Mm -hmm. I think it's totally going to work. They even left about three feet under the boat so that we can get in there and fiberglass and yeah. sand and grind and everything. So it was actually really cool. He actually laid on his back on a pallet and like reached up and they lowered the boat down to like arm's length. And they're like, okay, that's our height. Yeah. Oh, to, that, was, that was actually really smart. Sure I appreciate that. that. So it wasn't like an awkward like, do I squat, sit, lay, like, it's, it's a good height. <laughs> squat, sit, lay. Yeah. yeah. They warned us, they're like, hey, this might be, you know, an all day, maybe even like a three day process to get the keel dropped, all this stuff. It was two hours. Which is what we told them. It was two hours <laughs> from the time they fired up the machine till the time that they had already blocked, had, us, had and blocked us and left. Yeah, so it so went really well. It was pretty quick. Our keel came out well, we had prepped everything really well, and I think, yeah, it went off without a hitch. I mean, except for the hitch where they pulled off a bunch of the fiber lock. But 
Everything that was within anyone's control. control, really, yeah, went beautifully. It was, and the rudder slid right out. It did. And yeah. I, I'm happy. I'm pleased. Things and now, and now we can. I mean, now it's like go time. The project is, can really begin. Well, well it I already mean, began. That's true. But now, but now it's like okay, we can see all the pieces. They're all laid out before us. So now it's like before us. Do it. Like we can cut the we can cut these tabs off. Yeah. We can grind out this gel coat. We can sand everything, scuff everything, and yeah, like two or three days clean. from now, we might be able to start fiberglassing if we're really yeah. optimistic. Yeah. If we drink enough caffeine. <laughs> We get... Also, what we realized is that what we're doing is above and beyond. What we're doing is more than what most people do to fix this problem. Partially because I think our problem is bigger than what most people have <laughs> with this problem. But the way the guys were talking about this morning is that rebonding the hole to the grid isn't that uncommon. The guy that we were working with this morning was even like, oh yeah, I just used four bottle jacks and, and put them against the ceiling to the grid and kind of push down. And like, he has. Oh, what are they trying to get by? Anyways, we're super excited. We can move forward now with everything. I think we're done uninstalling. We've cut most of the tabbing out that we need to do. There's just a couple little spots we need to do. And then it's grinding and sanding and we gotta cut out bad fiberglass, sand out the gel coat, and then go to the fiberglass store and buy a lot of fiberglass. <laughs> We made each other a promise that once our keel was dropped, we could get a pastry. We almost got one yesterday because we were in the slings, the bolts were out, but we weren't actually disconnected. But today, it's disconnected. We are on our way to the pastry shop to get pastries, and we're each getting our own because it's a big deal. I'm excited to have my own pastry. Bag is full of happy thoughts. My choice. Then Brett got, it's called a lobster tail. Kind of looks like one. Yum. I can't believe I just did what I just did. Get that bonder out so I can get to this part. Go straight through the hole. Oh my goodness. This is, this is what's going on here. This is where Penny gets it, apparently. Oh, oh, ow, ow. Oh, 